It's an honor to be here. I'm a Tulane graduate <laughs> and uh, yeah, Newcomb. And uh, so I always want to give a shout out. Um, but it is my pleasure to animate for you today what's in both books, uh, The Baby Dolls, uh, Breaking the Race and Gender Barriers of the New Orleans Mardi Gras Tradition, which came out in 2013, and Walkin' Ratty, uh, which came out in 2018. And I always recommend Walking Ratty because the visuals, when we come to talking about Mardi Gras culture, uh, the visuals tell a story. I am pleased, really, really pleased, to be here with two queens, and I'll explain that in a minute, uh, but to be here with two people who can um, really give you uh, um, an insider's look at what it means to mask as a baby doll and to carry a tradition uh, that's over 100 years old. First of all, there's Merlene Kimball in the middle. Merlene is the founder of the Gold Digger Baby Dolls. She is a community activist and an event planner. Merlene has a particularly rich history with the baby dolls since the tradition goes back to her grandparents' time and the siblings, uh, her grandparents and her grandparents' siblings who masked as baby dolls in the 1930s, uh, the one of the heydays of the baby doll tradition. Their group disbanded during World War II as the men went to war. The name of the group pays, the name of her contemporary group, the, baby, the Gold Digger Baby Dolls, uh, pays homage to her grandparents' group, which was called the Gold Digger Social and Pleasure Club. Merlene has been masking as a baby doll since the 1970s. Merlene reigned as the queen baby doll in the Crew Delusion Parade that follows Crew de Vue, and that was in 2022. So this is the origin of, of one queen. Now we have Anita Oubre. Anita was born and raised in New Orleans. She's always enjoyed carnival, both as a spectator and as an active participant. She enjoys dancing all over the streets. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as a member of the uh, Mafalada dance troupe, that's a dance troupe if you all aren't familiar with Mardi Gras, uh, there are a bevy of women's groups that, that dance, and they owe their, um, I think, the, especially the contemporary ones like the Mafaladas, they owe uh, their legacy to the baby doll tradition because the baby dolls were the first, one of the first women's walking groups um, in the United States. Uh, so anyway, uh, she also is a member of the Lady Roller Social Aid and Pleasure Club, and she's a, a participating baby doll. She's the founder of the Mahogany Blue Baby Dolls. Her name is Magnolia Rose. And she shares the joy of dolling with her daughter, granddaughters, and many cherished baby doll friends. Anita reigned as the queen baby doll in the Crew Delusion Parade, um, following the crew, which follows the Crew de Vue Parade in 2023. So you have a lot of Mardi Gras royalty here. And um, Anita was kind enough to dress out for you all today. And, <laughs> and uh, when she asked me, I said, yeah, please do, because it, we can get into the particulars of costuming. Um, if you have looked at uh, either of those books, you'll know that costuming has changed through the years. And I'm particularly interested, I even have my own question for them uh, as uh, the tradition is evolving. Um, about some of the some of the traditions that are maybe getting uh, passed on and some that are being left behind. So I'm going to open my question to the two of you: Is um, what's a baby doll, and what is what's the origin of the baby doll tradition? Well, I was alive when the when we had the bra burning days. I know a lot of you remember that. Well, the baby dolls. It's just my own personal opinion that um, the baby dolls reminded me sort of of that era. Because during that time, the women had to kneel on the floor. Their skirts had to touch the floor. And if it didn't, then you were considered like a loose woman. And for these women to come out with these dresses, like up their thighs, I think that was sort of a rebellious kind of thing, where the women said, well, you're not going to tell me I have to wear this long dress. and." I have to do this and that. I'm doing what I want to do. And they came out and they cut up. And um, 
with my grandparents, uh, I have a, a really large picture of the group. And I looked at them and uh, I said, I think, well, Lois Nelson Andrews talked me into it. That's Trombone Shorty and James Andrews' mother. Every day, you're going to do it, you're going to do it. No, 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 no. So finally, I just gave in and said, OK. So we came out in the 70s. And last Mardi Gras, I think it was from 22 to 27 sets of baby dolls on the street. And it started off with one group, the Gold Diggers. We brought it back. And now it's back. Now I can stop. <laughs> she's, she's not going to stop because I see Merlene's, uh, I've been able to follow Merlene since 2010. And I see, <laughs> I see Merlene's costuming change. And uh, this year, um, I, I just, I look at all of, I've just followed the pictures. And uh, you're doing some unique and new things now with costuming. So you're evolving. You're not going anywhere. No. Well, I, I had, uh, we ordered some material from Senegal, Africa. And we trimmed our dresses in those. This is the second year that we've used um, an African print, which I know my grandparents didn't do that, no. but we did. And it, it turned out really nice, and they were beautiful. It was. It was very but beautiful. But we dressed traditionally, the way my grandparents dressed. There's baby dolls now. Um, they don't dress traditionally. They come out in high heel boots, corsets. We're taking it back type. to 1912. We're, we're going with that version of the baby doll story. <laughs> yeah, so we're talking about origins of the baby doll. So yeah. what, what might be another origin story? Well, Do you wanna, my, gonna, my grandmother told me that, um, she says, when I was a baby doll, it was the most fun I ever had in my whole life. Well, I was around to see my grandmother have a lot of fun. Because it was like, it was 90-something of us uh, grandchildren. I have like 78 first cousins right now. And imagine all of that piled up into a four bedroom, living room, dining room, den, house, all those people. And I've seen her get up and do her thing and have her little fun and get her little drink on. And I said, oh, come on, have fun, you know. But if baby darling was the most fun she ever had in her whole life, that's saying a lot about baby darling. <laughs> and so that's what made Lois want to do it. <laughs> you know Lois. Yes. So that made her want to do it. And I did it, and I'm glad I did. Because and the most important thing is um, my grandmother saw us. She was alive. She was the last living gold digger baby doll. And she was at my aunt's house, and we came I told my cousin, go put a second line song on. And we came second lining through the door and started second lining around her. She jumped out of that chair like somebody <laughs> stuck a pin in her butt. <laughs> and my grandmother was a very strong woman. Uh, she didn't have to speak to us but one time. And if you didn't, you paid the consequence, not like today, where uh, they had the time out and all that. She, <laughs> she had the Daniel Green slippers. <laughs> And that told it all. So uh, I'm saying that to say that um, to see her standing in the middle of the floor, laughing and crying at the same time, scared me. Because this woman had control. And to see her out of control like that, um, it scared me. So I stopped and I grabbed her by the shoulders and I said, are you all right? She, and we all had on our favorite colors. None of us was dressed alike. And I was dressed in white. And she said, that was the last colors we paraded in was white. So I wore white every year, you know, till James Andrews made us change our colors. So now we all dress in the same colors, like a group. But before that, we were dressing in um, different colors, you know, colors that we like that look good on us. But now we're all in the same colors. And I've never picked a color. You know that? Who picks the color? Everybody else in the group. I never say, well, okay, we're going to do red this time. Whatever color they say, I go, oh, okay, we'll do that. Let, let's uh, distinguish, because both of you, uh, I've mentioned in your introductions the idea of social aid and pleasure clubs. Let's distinguish social aid and pleasure clubs from baby dolls. 
tradition? Well, there's um, social aid and pleasure clubs. The aid parts, it uh, aid the community. If you don't have your light bill money, you go to the social aid and they'll, they'll help you pay it. That's when you add aid to your group. Mm -hmm. But if you're a social and pleasure club, you're just about partying. Mm -hmm. You're not about to aid anybody. Mm -hmm. But the social aid and pleasure clubs, they aid the communities. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Do they work differently from the baby doll groups? No, it's the same thing. I think there's a lot of similarities. Um, not so much the history, but in the way we practice today, uh, because the baby dolls, we also um, give aid to our communities and to one another in the baby doll community itself, whether one of us needs help with, you know, a bill or, you know, needs to borrow, um, you know, a recipe to, you know, if they're having a dinner party or, you know, hey, I need some help with whatever. We're there to aid one another and help one another. So your group is a social aid no, our, our baby doll group is not, but oh. I'm saying it's very similar mm. in that we help one another, not only in the community, but amongst ourselves. And how it's the same is we come out as a group and we have the second line band behind us. So, and that's the same thing as the second line group. So that's the similarity, mm -hmm. you know. All right. Um, how did, how, why, so the baby doll tradition uh, started, you know, in the 1910s, 19 aughts, but it and it and it had a heyday, and then it began to die out. Why do you think it died out? The war. And the and um, Uncle Lionel, I don't know if you know him, but Uncle Lionel's sisters and brothers and all that, they had a group of baby dolls. Some people called them the Baptiste Gang. Some of them called them the Dirty Dozen which the Dirty Dozen Brass Band came from that. Mm -hmm. And their children uh, continued the Dirty Dozen Brass Band, and they ended up getting a Grammy and all of that. Mm -hmm. But when Uncle Lionel and all of them came out, it was hilarious because the men would put um, peanut butter or mustard or something like that up the butt. Well, they were babies. They were I know they were babies. <laughs> and their sisters was dressed the way we dress traditionally. And I was uh, privileged in seeing them. And then when they ended, there was no more baby dolls. And this was from the 60s. There were no more until Lois and I brought it back. And now it's through the roof. It is. It everywhere is. you go, there's baby dolls, everywhere. Um, what do you think? Caused the revival of the baby doll tradition. Lois and I sitting on my step talking about my grandmother, and that's what started it back. And it looked like every time I turn around, it's a new group. I think it's become so popular because they see we're having the time of our life, <laughs> just like your grandmother said she was having the best time of her life. Right. I've been having the time of my life for the last eight years. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an incredible sisterhood. It's an incredible feeling. Once I uh, dress up, I show up and show out, and I do work in my community. I have 80 sisters, and it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Well, the, the stuff that you do when you have this costume on, would you do that type of stuff without this costume on? When I do not have my regalia on, I'm a pretty professional type <laughs> gal, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm an HR director in my real life, and once I put on my regalia, I turn into this fierce, <laughs> sexy, uh, I have confidence, and, and I love myself, and I love my sisters, and I love what we do. I, I also, when I do presentations on the baby dolls, I talk about how it continues to be an accessible tradition, because in social aid and pleasure clubs, you may have to pay dues, um, but in the baby doll tradition, you don't necessarily have to pay, no. to pay dues. And so the expense comes in the attire. Well, the, the attire and plus, the band is like $1,000. Everybody put up $100, we parading. Yeah. You don't have to give $20 a month, you know, mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's how we just do it. Mm -hmm. 
And then once we have a celebration, we all get together and, you know, one person makes the chicken salad, one person brings the bread, one person, you know, makes the punch. And, you know, we all put in for whatever it is we do. And if someone runs short, you know, we, we have each other's back. Well, we end up going on Arlene's and Clavon, get up on the stage, dance with whatever band is up there. And my aunt lives right across the street, so we go over there and all the food is there, so we just eat. And, <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, lay out like, oh my God, is it over? You know, I want to delve into that a little bit more because people look at, um, you know, the baby dolls and they see these beautiful costumes, they see all this high energy. But there's a real cost to, I don't mean money-wise, but I mean, you know, going through those uh, streets on uh, any time that you're, you know, in a procession, uh, there's a lot of energy that goes in that. A you can lot. be pretty wiped out um, At by the, the end. end of it. Oh, yes. Um, um, Ruth Owens painted a, a portrait of me after the parade. Mm -hmm. And I really look drained out. I'm like, mm -hmm. and that's the picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the painting, rather. Yeah. Yeah, when it's happening, you, you, you're not feeling the exhaustion. No. You're not feeling that torn meniscus. You're feeling exuberant. There's an energy. It's, it's almost like a religious experience when you're out there and you're in the midst of the music and the energy and you're in your community and your city and your loved ones. And it's just, it's, it's a beautiful, intense feeling, um, even after an event or a parade or whatnot, and I get home and I'm in bed and I'm still parading. I'm in bed for <laughs> hours at night and I'm still moving. I'm still, it takes a, a while to, to calm down. come down from that. Mm -hmm. When I put it on, um, before I take that dress off, we're out on the street, I look into the sky and I point and I say, Grandma, look at your baby. Because sometimes when I put it on, I'm feeling really good and I'm out there and we're bouncing around and everything. But at one point, it goes back to her. And when it does, I get this feeling. And so I just have to yell out to her and tell her, look at me. I'm a baby doll. And it makes me feel better. Yeah. Our um, African American traditions in New Orleans continue because we are so indebted to our ancestors. And so even though, you know, you're out there having a good time, you are bringing that history, you know, alive on the streets. And sometimes people make the mistake and say, oh, those are street traditions. They are not street traditions. They are performances that happen on the public street. And I always like to, you know, make that distinction as well. And there's one thing I want to stress is that all baby dolls did not come from Storyville. Mm -hmm. My grandmother and her family was not from Storyville. They was from 1405 Dumaine Street, <laughs> <laughs> which, which is now Louis Armstrong Park. And her mother was in the 1100 block of Dumaine Street. So from the 1100 block to the 1500 block of Dumaine Street, my family goes back six generations. And they were not from Storyville. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about, about origins. We don't know who that first group decided, you know, was it, did it come from vaudeville? You know, because at the turn of, of, the, turn of the century, the sex symbols and, um, were developing as grown-up women wearing little baby, uh, baby doll costumes. And so that became a sex symbol. And today, like we have the, the Bayettes, you know, people coming out, women coming out as Beyonce groups. I think the baby dolls may have been the similar thing in, you know, in 1910, 1912, that vaudeville and uh, cinema and popular Ten Pan Alley, top popular music and uh, African-American music, you know, they were singing about you know, people as, you know, babies and daddies and mamas, and you were, you were developing a whole language of, of popular culture. And so that became enacted. And so, uh, you know, people, people were having fun. It's, you could do what you want. You could be who you want on Monte Grande. I so. never would raise my dress up like that and show my unders, never. But, but in 19, in but, in, but in a baby doll. <laughs> and then, and then, you know, 19, in the 19 aughts, women were, women were doing that. They were really daring, that really daring. 
Yeah. That was like the bra brownie days. Don't you agree? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. My particular group, uh, we pay homage to those first women that came out in Storyville. Um, we, and Miss Merlene, she, you know, she chastises me, you know, here <laughs> and there, you know, if a baby wouldn't wear it, you shouldn't wear it. But, you know, I, I respect her and her history. Um, but our group is kind of a little bit different. We, we play with a little fake cigar and we have a little pocket knife in our brassiere. We like to wear garters and show a little leg. So it's our way of payment homage to the women, um, you know, who didn't have a choice, those women in Storyville and Black Storyville who um, came out and integrated Mardi Gras. I'm not down in Storyville. I had two cousins that owned houses and they were madams. I'm not downing them. I'm just sure. saying that all baby dolls were not from Storyville. Yeah. You know, I want to take up that, um, take that up because some people are ambivalent about this uh, tradition. And, um, you know, but we have these groups that are predominantly, that are predominantly white and they have these uh, really suggestive names and they, they wear more suggestive attire during carnival season, you know, than baby dolls would. And yet they don't have the baggage of, you know, oh, you know, was there, you know, some kind of, you know, illicit uh, activity um, among them. And so they, they operate you know, differently. Why do you think the, the baggage of, you know, um, where, you know, the tradition started, why do you think that hangs on the tradition so much? I think things are just really different in 2023. There, there's not a whole lot of, um, it, it's just the norm to show a breast or a leg or come out half naked during Mardi Gras. I mean, New Orleans, um, is known for, you know, showing your boobs to get the beads. I, I think that's more accepted, whereas it was taboo once upon a time to even show an ankle. Yeah. But it's not stopping women from engaging in the tradition. Why do, why do women want to do it today? Why do we have all of these groups, Merlene? What I happened? I don't know. It just, in, 10, in, in 13 years since, when, you know, I, since never I first thought. met you. I never would have thought. It was you. It would have been out there. this many groups. I never would have thought. I thought Lois and I would come out a couple of years, and that would be it. No, I, 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 I put, I put, I wrote on Facebook that I wasn't gonna do this anymore. I'm walking on Canal Street. Here come this woman. Oh, there you are. I don't even know this woman. Um, if it's about the little costume, I'll pay for that. But you cannot stop because when I see you, I know I'm seeing the original baby dolls. And, and I'm like, ma'am, I could buy my own costume. Well, I want to see you out there. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I got so many comments. I said, well, I guess I'll stay in it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about how would we distinguish a baby doll from anybody who might have a tutu on or, you know, um, how do you know a baby doll when you see a baby doll? Well, the key word is baby. And actually what it is, it's a grown woman dressed as a baby. And she's a baby doll. So if you come out in um, a corset, uh, I don't consider you a baby doll. You know, the key word is baby. It's a woman dressed as a baby. So I, uh, the tutus and all, the babies wear tutus now. So it's okay, because I've seen babies in tutus. But I've never seen a baby in a corset. <laughs> <laughs> and the only baby I saw dressed in black was Rosemary's baby. <laughs> all babies are dressed in pretty colors. You know, if it's a girl, it's in a pink all the time. It's a boy, it's always in the blue or the green or something like that. But I've never seen a baby in black, um, unless it was Rosemary's baby. <laughs> <laughs> but yet, I think that the reason that there are so many groups is that I think baby dolling and doll, baby and dolling has become a verb, right? It's, it's, it's fun. It's become a verb. It's fun. I think. So many women want to put their stamp on how they want to present 
the baby I'm, doll tradition. I'm, I'm learning about the baby dolls in Brazil. The baby dolls in Brazil? Mm-hmm. And they have, this woman told me they have like a white baby. And they'll go up to people and say, you got to take care of this baby. They yell out stuff. I mean, hurtful stuff at people. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. Isn't that yeah. called the Moss? Moss tradition. Yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, I'm just yeah. learning it's, about them. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's widely practiced. Well, it had been. It's an old mass in Trinidad, and it's it's different from our baby doll tradition. In Trinidad, that's yeah, where it is. That's right. Yes, it's different than our baby doll tradition because right. they're saying something. They're making a political statement about men that's not taking right, care of, of, their, their of their babies. Right. And so they go up and they accost men, you know, and until, until, and they really embarrass and they're really loud and they're like, this is your baby, mind your baby, get, and then the men will give them some money. They put it like that. But our baby, you know, it's, oh it's, how, we're de- it's how we're defining baby. Right. You know, it's like in New Orleans, the, the, the baby, you know, I'm the baby. You know, am I the baby of, you know, a little girl baby or am I a baby of... You know, I'm your lover, baby. So I think that we have, you know, a range of of of, def- of definitions of baby. But I do think it's interesting that um, the baby doll tradition is also in Trinidad, a place mm-hmm. that also had a French influence, like like we did. It is something. It is something. We're the same. These I want to I want to learn more about that, and maybe one year I might go over there. And see it. Yeah, or maybe we can find a way to bring some here for my That would be great. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, that would be that great. That would be great. Because I think it's a different time, a different date. Yeah. That their their carnival is from ours. That's what I was told. Are they? It's not the same date. So maybe we could get them here. We'll have to check it out. That yeah. reminds me of um, there, there was a group of ladies, about a dozen ladies who had come uh, last spring. Uh, and they were dressed uh, in the Lolita fashion, and they were seeking out us. They were seeking out the baby dolls, and they came um, over to the Treme Fest, and here comes this this group of beautifully dressed young women, and of course, we're thinking, oh, gee, who are they? Another baby doll group. Who who are these people? And they said, we we wanted to meet you all. Wow. We read about you. We wanted to meet you, and they came just beautifully represented with different bonnets and dresses and uh, toll and it, it was just amazing. There, I'll have to send you the pictures. There's a beautiful picture of, there's about 50 of us all together wow. with these young women. It was really hmm. special. Let's talk about baby doll attire. What do you wear when you're a baby doll? I wear whatever's going to make me feel um, confident and sexy and beautiful. Uh, my group and I, we get together and we, we come up with maybe maybe three dresses a year. There's a special dress uh, for Mardi Gras Day. Of course, you have your new dress um, each Mardi Gras Day. But we like to have one other dress like for the carnival season because now we're invited to parade and, and, and mainstream parade. So we have one dress for the carnival season and then our Mardi Gras <coughs> Day dress. I'd like to, before we open everything up to the audience, I'd like to ask you all to talk about some of the new traditions that the baby dolls have created, such as? Blessing of the streets. Yes, tell us what that is. Uh, it started, I guess this was our maybe our fifth year, mm-hmm. but it started out um, as a little ceremony in the parking lot of a bar where we decided we wanted to um, pray together for a safe carnival season because so many <laughs> terrible things can happen out on the streets. And this was the brainchild of uh, Kit, uh, baby doll <laughs> Kit. Uh, Carol. And um, so we all got together and some of the dignitaries from the mayor's office came and we prayed together and we got together. The news people were there and we're like, what's going on? We just wanted to get together and, you know, and pray. And, and, and it's grown bigger and bigger and bigger every year. It started out with maybe a dozen of us that first year. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Jazz Museum hosts us now. And it's become where we invite new girls to become uh it's kind of like a christening, if you will. Uh, right. they, they come in their white dress, and it's their debut into the baby doll community. And uh, not only do we still pray, but we have the Indians come, and they chant, and we have a band, and we dance, and we have food and champagne, and it's like the big kickoff to carnival season for us. 
And also, you've begun to observe Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why do you? Why? Why is that special for you? Um, just you know, to, to to pay homage to the people who came um, before us, uh, to to get out there in the community and um, show up and be together and uh, be grateful for the freedoms of today. All right. Oh, and you know, I also noticed that a lot that there's mm -hmm. a lot more um, African attire the baby dolls wear for Juneteenth. <laughs> you, you too, <laughs> and for Juneteenth. Right. We're actually uh, going to come up with some some beautiful uh, dresses. Uh, Gilda, uh, <laughs> one of our baby dolls with La Bon Ton baby dolls, she um, goes to Africa once or twice a year, and she brought back a lot of material and gifted to the different groups because she would like to see everyone with a dress that has, you know, the patchwork on it. So we're looking forward to, to that for our next dress. All right, we're gonna open up for questions and, you know, please use the microphone in the middle. So she had the unique, uh, I guess you might say, experience of being in the, uh, the trade group that you do, the, uh, the Muffaladas, mm -hmm. and also being a baby doll. So I think you were trying to get her to comment a little bit about the differences rather than, you know, the, the but what are some of the differences with the group of women who are not necessarily coming from the baby doll experience and what you go through with them as opposed to what you go through with the baby dolls? Well, as a Muffalada, I, I pay dues to be part of that group, and I go to a practice every week. Uh, whereas the baby dolls, it's more like a family event. I'm with my family, I'm with my sisters, where that's, you know, a, a group that I pay to be part of. And the routines are choreographed. And choreographed routines, whereas we just dance from our spirit. partner with a crew every year like you're always with Cleopatra or King Arthur or do you, does it change year to year? For the baby dolls uh, whoever invites us uh, we talk about it and we get a group together and uh, um, we're really enjoying being out on you know mainstream carnival because um, historically we're on the back streets we're in the neighborhoods and on Mardi Gras Day, we're still in the neighborhoods. We bring Mardi Gras to the, the people who are shut in, the elderly who can't get out mm -hmm. and attend Mardi Gras. So this is something relatively new to be out um, in those type of parades. I was wondering about the gentlemen walking clubs where the, they'll all wear the same suit and a lot of little, bo they'll have little bitty boys all the way to grown men. Do you, did those groups start after the baby dolls? No. Or was it with, or do you think y'all inspired them? <laughs> I think they inspired us. <laughs> I think you're speaking on the social aid and pleasure clubs yeah. that have been around for Forever. hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, I have a friend who's in, I think she's just in a marching club in the ninth ward, and it's, there seems to be a season, and I was wondering, is there a season for the baby dolls as there is for the marching clubs that exist? We come out on Carnival Day, but if we were invited to a, somebody's wedding or a birthday party or something like that, we come out for that. But there's no season for the social aid and pressure clubs because every Sunday there's a second line. I think they've run out of Sundays. <laughs> I don't think you can get a Sunday, you know. So they're, they're like all year. Because the Dumain Street Gang comes out in December. It's cold. Yeah, once upon a time, you would only see a baby doll on Mardi Gras Day. And yeah. like Marlene said, we're, we're, we're everywhere now. Um, I don't know if that takes away from the specialness of it. Be, oh, y'all again. But, you know, like she said, you know, people call us and they're like, can you come dance at my wedding? Will you dance at my birthday? Will you be an honor guard at my funeral? And so you we're, were an we're, honor guard at a funeral, weren't you? Would you talk about that? Whose funeral it was? Um, gosh, who okay. was the last one? That, I mean, no, the, we did bootay. You did? You did, did you do the bootay? No, funeral? I did not do no. the bootay oh, funeral. We did that. Okay, so yes, I was like, what we to Eva? I mean, like, well, talk, talk about the oh, yeah. the heavy participation with funerals. Well, uh, T. Eva Perry, uh, she was uh, a, a mother baby doll to pretty much all of us. 
And when she passed away, it was um, a glorious celebration of her life. Uh, we were dressed in all of our finery, every color of the rainbow, and it was a, a beautiful, beautiful send off for her. It was uh, very emotional and sad. And of course, you know, we're going to miss her. And, and, and we always talk about the mm -hmm. lessons that, that she uh, gave to us. But um, her celebration of life was just a, a phenomenal, beautiful coming together of all of us. Um, she was a Cato baby doll. They were the second group. <laughs> they were the second group to come out. First, it was only the gold diggers. And then Cato had his set of baby dolls, but T. Eva was a, a part of that group. I miss her praline candy. Yeah, yeah. She made good candy. And when I was in high school, that was one of the stops on the way home to get a little, a little pecan pie or a praline. On magazine. Mm -hmm. Yep. On magazine. <laughs> yeah. I also miss those pralines. Oh, <laughs> uh, good. So good. Oh. <laughs> um, my question is uh, about, well, thank you all for being here, first off. You're quite this welcome. It's such a pleasure. I actually bought the book a couple of years ago, and I've had it, and I forgot about it, and then I saw this on the, the book list, and I was like, I'm so excited. <laughs> and I also am excited to now remember to read the book. I'm a star um, in that book. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Marlene, um, when you were sitting on the front porch talking about reviving the baby dolls, and talking about your grandmother, were you, um, what was kind of the impetus to pick it back up? Was it just for fun or was it because you wanted to rebuild that sisterhood, that community? Um, what, what was kind of the... the it was because was Lois Nelson Andrews pestered me every day. <laughs> we're going to do this. No, we're not, Lois. Yes, we are. We're going to bring the baby dolls back. No, we're not, Lois. We're grandmothers. We're not doing that. We're bringing it back. Oh, my God. OK. And that's how it started. She pestered me into it. And uh, Lois is the type, was, was the type of person that likes to get into a lot of projects. She and I have been in so many projects. And this was just one of them. And it turned out pretty well, I'd say. Yes. Thank you. I wanted to share a memory of Teva <clears throat> and Antoinette Cato. Oh. Uh, I used to produce a Fourth of July show called American Roots Fourth of July in Washington, and uh, they came up one year uh, with Cato dressed as Uncle Sam, and um, the, the two ladies were sort of Uncle Samettes, and uh, they all were in red, white, and blue and spangles. Eddie Bo was the band leader backing up Cato. And uh, they did baby doll kind of walkabouts and dance. And uh, it was just unforgettable. And I think a lot of people in Washington, you know, even on a holiday like the 4th of July, there's still a straight lace quality in Washington <laughs> that uh, New Orleans quickly overwhelms. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they, they were just fantastic. Um, and I did have a, a question, I, and maybe I missed this because I came in a little late. And, and Kim, you, you'll probably know. I'm, but to what extent do uh, baby dolls go with particular black masking Indian groups. I know on the West Bank with the Navajo, uh, the Navajo hunters, they had just several baby dolls. That, oh, they said they only came out with them. That's true. N yeah. Now, in 2023, there's baby dolls with Indians. Mm -hmm. But um, there was at one point, because I remember my grandmother said that if the baby dolls mass with the Indians, they had to be behind the Indians. It's like the Indians, the tambourines and drums, and then the baby doll. So it was done back then, and it, well, it ended, everything ended, but now it started back where the Indians, I mean, the baby dolls are with the Indians, but they're not behind the Indians, they're right next to them. So it's a whole different thing now. Maybe they don't know that they're supposed to be behind the drums. <laughs> <laughs> and in some families, uh, the masking Indians, the material that was left over after the soup was made, the women in the family used those scraps and made dresses, and it was a family affair where they all processed out into the street with, you know, fried chicken and cold beer and, you know, the washboard, and it was a big family affair. There's one thing I didn't understand. The gold digger baby dolls back in the 30s, the men wore top hats. 
And I know the only top hats they had was white and black because they only had three color suits for a man, brown, blue, and black. So I asked my grandmother, I said, if you uh, mask in yellow, how did you get a yellow top hat? She said, we took Rick dye and we dyed them with a sponge and we put them in the backyard on newspaper and let them dry. And then we took a brush and we brushed them and they were the color of their costume. Because I wanted to know about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Talk a little bit about the, 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 the terms for Indians, Mardi Gras Indians, some people prefer masking Indians, some people use a different term that gives them an M, you know what that is. Uh, what's the preference with the big yeah. guys? In terms of well, the Indians, they, um, they don't like being called masking Indians. They don't like being called Mardi Gras Indians. They want to be called Indians because that's what they are. If you look back and trace back to the Indians way back in the day, they were not white, they were black. And these people had, are from the same bloodline. So they, don't, they get insulted when you call them masking Indians and Mardi Gras Indians, because they're not, they're Indians. And if you look at my face, uh, you will not see the Congo you would see Chata. Yeah, so um, you just um, refer to yourselves as baby dolls, not, is it a black masking tradition? I mean, I always use the term black masking tradition. It is. For, for the, you know, the group of traditions that we have. How do, how, do, how do people who actually do it, how do they refer to it? Uh, we call ourselves baby dolls in, in my group. My group, too. Yeah. Uh, so with each, um, especially with the people who practice the Indian tradition, it depends on the group. Each group has an idea about how it is that they, they want to be referred to. I'm with a particular group, the Golden Feather Hunters, and our big chief, Shaka Zulu, is very adamant about having our tradition aligned with, with Africa. And Merlene is talking about, you know, her own Indian heritage, but we we are the mask, you know, the the idea of the African African mask. Um, not necessarily Shaka doesn't always cover his face, um, but but he aligns more with the, with an African uh, tradition. So you'd have to go to you'd have to. It's very particular. You'd have to go to. I know um, Daman Malansan only talks about you know black masking. Um, he doesn't talk about Indian or or anything like that. So, but but some people prefer. Some people will still will still say that they are Mardi Gras Indians. And of course, that is a term that was given to the tradition when the press became interested in the tradition because it wasn't a kind of Mardi Gras Indian. Well, during thing. slavery, the Indians and the Africans mixed, mixed, they and um, they they came out with costumes with chicken feathers and fish scales and all this stuff and made these beautiful costumes. And the different plantations had them compete with each other. And little did they know we were conversing, which we couldn't converse, but that gave us a chance to converse on how to get away, stuff like that. And um, I think the, well, the Africans, they had beadwork and all that type of oh, stuff. Yeah. Because right now, um, if you see something from Africa and see something from an Indian, it looks the same. The beadwork and everything is like the same, you know, because we are the same. African. We are the same. Well, I want to thank my <laughs> panelists. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Um, you know, we, we had. Uh, the presentation over at, at the at the museum in 2013, that the exhibit and whatnot, and then Walk and Ratty, where you presented um, all of the baby dolls at that time with certificates of appreciation. But you know, we want to show you appreciation. We appreciate you know um, the, the year One Book New Orleans, and that's when baby dolls really came out 
um, and, and were uh, recognized by, by the, the whole city and the community, that year was amazing. So thank you for your writing, for your work, for including us um, today, and for all that you do. Oh, my love, I love you. <laughs> And, and thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it.